Come to give God praise, hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made and we've come to rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify, 
Oh, lift up his name because he's worthy to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't need to welcome the Lord. He's already here. And God, I thank you because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So God, we come freely to worship you. We come freely to praise you. Why? Because you've been so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got a testimony that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Come on, praise them, praise them. In your living room, he's worthy. In your bedroom, he's worthy. In the kitchen, he's worthy. Hallelujah. God, we bless your name. We bless your name on today. We would like to welcome you to our 10 a.m. worship experience here at the team. Uh, we pray that something is said, something is done that will impact you for the better and cause change for the good. Amen. Amen. While you are watching us, whatever stream you choose to, Facebook Live, Zoom, wherever we, you are, we want you to participate and engage with us by chatting in the chat. If the preacher say something you agree with, say amen. Go ahead and type it. Amen. And we will respond to those that we also not only want you to interact with us in the chats, uh, but if you have a prayer request or a testimony, there is a number at the bottom of your screen. We want you to call and you will talk to a live individual. Uh, if not, we want you to leave a message and we guarantee you will get a return phone call with your needs. Amen. All right. Y'all ready to continue higher in worship? Amen. Let us go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for this day that you have made. God, we thank you for all of the ways that you have provided for us and protected us and showered down your favor and your grace and your mercy upon us. And God, we thank you for first responders, whether in hospitals, ambulances, in schools, wherever they are. God, we thank you for their continued commitment. We thank you for their love, for the ministry that you have called them into. Now, God, we ask that you would continue to be with them. And God, for our students who all across the country are returning to face-to-face -face learning, God, we ask for your protection for them and their teachers and instructors and all of the staff that's required to get all of our students, whether in colleges or elementary school, preschool, as we're preparing them to come back to face-to-face -to -face learning. God, we thank you for what you will do, God. And now, God, we ask that you would continue to be with us and guide us and keep us as only you can and so. We invite and we invoke your Holy Spirit to be with us. God, we need a fresh anointing in times like these. We need a fresh anointing to continue on this journey. God, we need a fresh anointing to get to the other side of this. God, and we ask that you will go to the vessel of the hour who will deliver a word from you, God. Touch him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. God, if there's anything that is a distraction, God, we ask that you will remove it in the name of Jesus. God, we turn this worship experience over to you, God. And God, until that day, at the appointed time and not before when we see you face to face and we embrace you throughout eternity we will be we shall be steadfast immovable always abounding in the work of the lord because what we do for you will last god we thank you and we ask these things in the matchless name, the precious name, the everlasting name of Jesus the Christ. And everyone said, amen, amen, and amen.
church. Our gospel reading this morning will be taken from the gospel according to St. John, and we will be reading chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. And I will be reading this morning from the New International Version, the gospel of John, beginning at the second verse, second chapter, beginning at the 13th verse, and it reads thusly. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned the tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you are going to raise it in three days. But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, everybody. For this is the day the Lord has made, and we make a conscious decision to rejoice and be glad in it. This is the first Sunday of the month of March, and we are grateful to God that God has brought us really full circle. Uh, I do remember and recall that it was during this particular time uh, that the news hit. Uh, as far as this pandemic and we've been in this posture for a whole year and definitely we can look back and testify if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side where would we be and we want to take this moment to celebrate those whom uh, went a full circle around the sun one more time amen God has allowed you to see another birthday um, and I always claim that March is the greatest month in the entire year. And we are grateful to God for all of our March babies. I know you are out there. Come on, let's celebrate these persons. And happy birthday to each and every one of them.
have been waiting, have been waiting for your promise. For your promise. Yeah.
Come on, if you know he's a promise keeper. Come on and bless him. Come on, if you know he's a promise keeper. Come on and bless him. Hallelujah. His promises are yes and amen. Come on, if you know he's a promise keeper. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory. Glory be to El Shaddai. That'll preach right there. God is a promise keeper. Thank you so much to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. As always, we do count it a great joy, honor, and a privilege that you have invited us into your sacred space, into your homes worshiping with us this morning. We have so much to be thankful for. So much to praise God for. And I'm grateful that you are a part of this experience and you have been with us all year long. We're grateful for each and every one of you and we do not take every like. We do not take the comments, we do not take the prayers and the support lightly. Many of you have sold seed into this ministry that we might continue to hold up the light. We thank you and we praise God for each and every one of you. My brothers and sisters, I want to share with you what the Lord has deposited into my spirit and I do solicit your prayers on this morning and I was coming in and for some reason I was just feeling a lot of anxiousness and um, about this worship experience and so I do solicit your prayers and your amens and your hallelujahs. I want to invite your attention to an Old Testament passage of scripture, the book of Judges. Judges the 16th chapter, Judges chapter 16, and want to lift up um, just one verse in your hearing, Judges chapter 16, and we want to lift up just one verse, that's verse 22, Judges the 16th chapter, verse number 22. Let's pray together. Eternal God, we thank you. 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 For if we had 10,000 tongues, we wouldn't be able to thank you enough. So God, help me to preach. You've done it so many times before. Do it again, Lord. Comfort those who are being challenged by life and challenge those who are comfortable. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray. All of God's people said amen. Judges chapter 16, verse 22, we find these words reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. But before long, his hair began to grow back. But before long, his hair began to grow back. For the brief moments that the Lord will allow, I want to just talk from the subject. I feel my hair growing back. I, I feel my hair growing back. In the midst of brokenness, in the midst of failures, in the midst of sin, in the midst of mistakes, in the midst of the hurts that we have experienced, 
I come to say to you this morning, God restores. I cannot begin to tell all of the ways God has brought restoration to my life, to my mind, to my body. And the thing that we must understand about the restorative power of God is that God does not take you back to the way you were before you experience being broken. God's restoration takes the pain, the hurt, the brokenness that may have been caused by you or others and puts your life back in order, adjusts what is wrong and brings you to a place of amazing recovery and wholeness. When Jesus restores you, you always turn out better than you were before. God will take that which is broken and put it together again and make it better than what it was before. God will take the shattered pieces of your life and make them stronger than before. God's promises not only to restore, but to restore in abundance. Remember the prophet Joel told us what the Lord declared. I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten. You will have plenty to eat until you are full and you will praise the name of the Lord your God who has worked wonders for you and never again will my people be ashamed. The thief, the enemy of God's people will come into your life to steal kill and destroy still kill and destroy everything God has purposed and promised you Jesus says I come I come into your life that you might have life but not just a boring mediocre life but have an abundant life the enemy has wounded us with hatred. The enemy has wounded us with strife. The enemy has wounded us with jealousy and perversion and sickness and disease. But today I have my assignment and that is to speak restoration in and over your life. God wants you to put the brokenness, the hurt, the pain, and the anguish of your life in his hands for restoration. The word of God came to Jeremiah telling him to arise and go down to the potter's house. And when Jeremiah got to the potter's house, Jeremiah observed the potter working on a wheel. And he noticed that the clay in the potter's hands were spoiled. And nowhere in the text does it say the potter threw the clay away. Nowhere in the text does it say that the potter disregarded the clay, but the text says he reworked it into another vessel that was pleasing to him. Ah, my brothers and sisters, uh, if you look closely at that text, many of you can testify that you are in the reworking season. 
Uh, where God is reshaping and remolding to bring about restoration. Uh, in case you have fallen by the wayside of life, dreams and visions shattered. You all broken inside. You don't have to stay. Come on, help me, Hawkins. Come on, Tremaine. You don't have to stay in the shape that you're in because the potter wants to put you back together again. My brothers and sisters, I find myself every now and again watching HGTV or do-it-yourself television. TV shows like Fixer Upper or Flipping Houses. I watch with amazement as broken and outdated homes and pieces of furniture is transformed into something beautiful and valuable. And then it hit me, Sister Moore, the process of restoring is not simple and clean. Come on, help me, Holy Ghost. I need you. Restoration is often a messy process. Uh, think about when David said in the 23rd Psalms, he restores my soul. And when we think about that particular verse, uh, you may have a sense of calm and relax and peaceful. You, you picture in your mind God just coming into your life and slapping a fresh coat of paint. But restoration is a lot more involved than just painting over the problem. So, ah, Lord have mercy. In, in restoration, you just can't paint over the problems. And if we were to take that earthly example of restoration and give it spiritual meaning and spiritual significance, we must understand that restoration involves three stages. Y'all stay with me. It involves three stages. The first stage of restoration is the gutting process. Uh, just take a look at HGTV or do it yourself. They have to gut the house. In other words, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, gutting the house uh, is when you get rid of anything that needs to go. Pulling out the stuff that's out and unstable and unsound and so it is when God brings about restoration to our lives he has to gut some stuff out he has to remove some stuff that's out and unsound and unstable. He has to remove some situations and some people that were never intended to be there in the first place. God has to gut out every lie you believed. God has to gut out every false identity that you claimed. The gutting is sometimes a painful process, but God knows what he's doing. The second stage that I have learned watching, it's amazing where you can get a word from the Lord. Uh, and it shocked me, Brother Derek, that HGTV uh, dropped this example in my spirit. The second stage of, of this uh, restoration process is planning. Uh, once you can see the structural integrity of the peace, you can begin planning what the final product will look like. Ah, my, 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 my. Let, let, let me say that one more time. Once you see the structural integrity uh, of the peace, you can begin planning what the final product will look like. 
Ah, oh, my brothers and sisters, what you have to understand is the gutting process is what gives you character. Ah, the gutting process is what brings about such character integrity. And once God guts out all of the mess and you see the true essence of who you are, then God can begin planning hey, hey, what the final product will look like. This is a difficult stage for many of you. Uh, let me might as well come on in your room. Might as well come at your kitchen table. Uh, this is a difficult stage for many of you because you want to see the final product before the final product is finished. Help me, Holy Ghost. Lord, before I go up this road that you are telling me, first tell me what's on the road. Uh, tell me how long I'm going to stay on the road and then I make a decision whether or not I go up that y'all know how we do with the Lord when the Lord tells us to do something we need to know the details uh, we need to know the details whether or not we will accept the assignment or not but my brothers and sisters can I tell you uh, that every now and again you can't see the plans of God but God God hinted us to his plans through the prophet Jeremiah, uh, Chelsea, Jeremiah, Chelsea, for I know the plans, <laughs> help me Holy Ghost, that I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you a hope and give you a future. I, I thought about Sister Chelsea when I wrote that scripture down because at every meeting that's her scripture that, that she recites that, that she says I, I, I may not understand all of the plans that God has for me in my life but I trust in God's plans because God wants me to give wants to give me hope and, and a bright future there is the staging the second stage of planning and then the third stage the third stage is the actual beautification uh, the creation uh, 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 the manifestation of what uh, you saw, what God saw in stage two. <laughs> uh, no longer the dirty old, but it's something new has been formed. Suddenly, the chaotic season is over. <laughs> Suddenly, the doubt and the frustration uh, that you felt is over. And now God fills your life with mores. I want to let you know that we serve a God of more. More joy. Help me, Holy Ghost. More love. More strength. More peace. God is the God of more. And here's what the Lord says. Behold, I do a new thing. Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, behold, I do a new thing. Why? Because old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Uh, but one of the greatest stories of restoration, help my voice, Jesus, takes place in Judges. Uh, uh, the Philistines were oppressing the Israelites and in the midst of their oppression they started praying to God for deliverance uh, uh, my brothers and sisters when you pray uh, to God for deliverance you cannot question how God brings the deliverance to you and we find in the story uh, then the city of Zorah there was a man named Manoah uh, whose wife was 
barren. Uh, barren means that she was not able to conceive by natural means. And an angel of the Lord appeared to her and told her she's about to give birth. Isn't it just like God to come in barren situations ah, and speak birth. <laughs> Lord help me here. It's just like the God that we serve that are come in to dry situations, dead situations and bring about life. I told her that she was about to give to deliver a son uh, he, and this son would be a Nazarite from the womb and his strength would be in his hair she gave birth to a son and called his name Samson Samson had strength Samson had super powerful strength he once killed a lion with his bare hands Samson once defeated and killed an entire Philistine army of 1,000 troops with nothing more than a donkey's jawbone. Often when we hear the story of Samson, we hear about him and Delilah. We focus on what happened with him and Delilah. We teach and we preach on what happened with him and Delilah. We laugh and talk about and joke about what happened with him and Delilah and God says that's the problem uh, my people love to focus on the sin and not the not the, and not the one who can restore and forgive you of your sins. Hey, God says that's the problem. We want to talk and gossip about what folks do in their private areas, but not talk and gossip about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And my brothers and sisters, isn't it funny that the very ones that want to talk about Samson and Delilah. They themselves have found their head laying in the wrong person's lap. Ah, but I did not come to talk about what Samson and Delilah did. Ah, but I do want to talk about what God did to Samson in verse 22. Help me, Holy Ghost. The text says, but before long, his hair begin to grow back. That's a shout right there. Ah, my brothers and sisters, isn't it interesting that even in the text, we have long verses about what Samson did, the mistake that Samson made, but only one little verse, Lord help me here, about what God did to Samson. Isn't it strange how we can believe a lie but we won't believe the truth. Isn't it a shame that a lie and gossip will spread like fire? But one little positive truth uh, I've discovered my brothers and sisters and I find it quite interesting. People don't like to gossip about how you help them but they always want to talk about how you hurt them. But I come this morning to let somebody know that God will show up in chapter tw in verse 22 of your life he don't care what you did in verses 1 through 21 he'll show up in verse 22 and it was in verse 22 that God showed up and now my brothers and sisters uh, hair 
has a purpose. Ah, uh, it has a purpose. Ah, uh, yeah, look at your neighbor, say hair has a purpose. Ah, uh, for example, the hair above your eyes prevents dust uh, from rolling down into your eyes. Yeah, it has a purpose. The hair inside of your nostrils is for keeping stuff out of your nose. But for most people, the hair that is on top of our head is so very important because it keeps our head protected from the elements, from the cold weather. And whenever that hair begins to thin, whenever that hair begins to shrink, we begin to look for ways to replace that hair. We spend a lot of money working on our hair. Can I get a witness in here? Sometimes the hair doesn't cooperate. No matter how you try to fix it, you braid it, it won't cooperate. You curl it, you, it won't cooperate. You gel it, it won't cooperate. You weave it, you color it, you relax it, you frizz it, you highlight it, you twist it, and sometimes hair just doesn't cooperate. Well, in the text, we find Samson had a hair problem. Ah, but in spite of the hair problem, the text says that his hair began to grow back. Notice that his hair started growing back when the enemy was celebrating. Yeah, it's in the text. Notice while they were partying, while they were turn up, Samson was tied up, but his hair began to grow back. Samson began to feel a revival of his soul. Samson began to feel the spiritual power that he had when God spoke over his mother's life. God tells me in his Bible, in the Bible, that in that moment of restoration, Samson kill more people ah in that moment of restoration Samson destroyed the enemy and I don't know who I'm talking to but I want to let you know that we serve a God who can who will restore you while the enemy is celebrating your downfall God steps in and gives you restoration you may have so gone through some stuff in your life God restores you may have made some mistakes God restores you may have stayed away from the body of Christ God restores you may have dropped your ministry your calling but today God says I'm gonna restore you you may have been blinded by your past mistakes feel bad about bad choices but God says today is the day of restoration your future is not determined by your past because God restores your future is not determined by what you used to do because God restores there is no no secret what God 
Woo! What God can do, what He's done for others, He will. Won't He do it? Won't He do it? Won't He make a way? Won't He heal your body? He will. He will. He will. Yes, He will. I'm a witness. God will. God will. God will restore. God will cause that that was not growing uh, uh, to start growing back. That's what the praise team was singing this morning about God's promises. In spite of where Samson and Delilah were, <laughs> God can go back on God's word that he spoke over Samson's life while he was being formed. In his mother's womb. Ooh, that's good news. <laughs> God, God can't go back on his word that he told your grandma, your mama. <laughs> when they were praying over you and praying about you. <laughs> regardless of what you do, regardless of what you say, God can't go back on God's. Because God will step in right at verse 22 in your life. <laughs> uh, while your enemy is celebrating your downfall, your disappointment, your fear, while they partying and turning up, God is turning up your spirit. <laughs> uh, God is restoring you. He restores my soul. And I don't know about you, but I need restoration. Uh, restoration is not just a one hit wonder. Re restoration is a, <laughs> it's an everyday process because can I tell you every day the devil is busy, the devil is, tr is working, the devil is trying to do everything the devil can to steal who you are. But I'm here to tear you and speak over your life. We serve a God, a God of restoration. And right now, in this very moment, He wants to restore you. Don't, don't focus. On everything you've lost hear this I'm not saying you deny it didn't happen but don't focus on everything that you lost but start thinking about the stuff you gain <laughs> see let me tell you that the enemy will try to keep your mind over on the loss 
that you forget about the table of blessings that spread out before you. And if you're constantly focused on what you lost, what you can't do, what you didn't do, what you're not able to do, you'll forget about the blessing. God, I thank you. Thank you for restoration. Thank you for another chance. Thank you for another opportunity. Thank you. 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 God, when you restore, you restore in abundance. You make it better. <laughs> and so, God, we stand on tiptoe expectation <laughs> that this season of our life is going to be better than it was before we stand on tiptoe expectation believing that you're moving and you're working and you're opening up doors oh god we thank you 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 because restoration Restore those who are listening to me now. Uh, restore those, oh God, who've heard this message on this morning. And God, we don't care what they said or did. Today is a brand new day. Today is the day. Thank you. It's in Jesus' mighty, strong name we do pray. Come on. Put your hands together. Put them hearts. Come on, lift them up. Come on, come on. Let's bless him right now. Come on, let's bless him right now. Let's bless him right now. Let's bless him right now. Come on, let's bless him right now. Wherever you are. Bless the God of restoration. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. He'll keep his promise. You gotta know that today. That's really why Jesus came into the world. That was his assignment to bring about restoration, to reconcile us back to our Creator. It was through the shedding of his blood. Him receiving 72 platted thorns on his head. The stripes on his back from the whip. As he carried that old rugged cross. <laughs> 
It wasn't smooth, it was rugged. <laughs> Yet, he didn't come down. He didn't retaliate. Because he thought about us. He thought about you. He's a promise keeper. He thought about you in the, in the midnight hour. He thought about you when you would experience disappointment. And he thought about you. He, he thought about you. He thought of And so, right where you are, with your family, with yourself. Uh, we're gonna take communion. <laughs> He's a promise. And I want to let you know today that the blood still works. In taking communion, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have dotted every I, crossed every T. Because if that's the case, none of us would be able to take communion. But we take communion. To celebrate and to praise God for restorative power. For the forgiveness of our shortcomings. And so everybody, let's get the bread. The wafer that symbolizes the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. The night that he was betrayed was sitting at the table with his disciples. He reached over and grabbed the bread and said to his disciples, this is my body. It's not taken, I'm giving it. Nobody had to steal it, I'm giving it freely. for the forgiveness, the remission of our sins. I want you to take and eat. And then scripture says after supper, he looked over and he saw the cup. And he grabbed the cup and he said, to his disciples, this cup represents the new covenant now. Uh, th this represents my blood that I shed for you and for many. He said, I'm not going to spill it, but I'm going to shed it. for the remission, for the forgiveness, for the restoration of your mind, your body, and soul. And so we drink. He's a promise keeper. And God will keep his promises. And may this preserve thy body and soul.
to everlasting life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank God for his spirit. We thank God for just being and saturating this atmosphere on this morning. We praise God for the word. Thank God for our pastor who brought forth the word and we pray his restoration and his replenishment for pouring out all that God had put in to him for us this morning. We've now come to the time in our worship experience for our worship through giving. It's offering time in the house of the Lord. And what better way to respond to worship to what God has done in your life by through giving. We thank you for your gifts. We thank you for your tithes and your offerings. We thank you for your stewardship, our Turner family and our Turner friends. You can continue to bless our missionary society, our YBD, our lay organization, our scholarship ministry, and all the other ministries that are doing a great thing here at Turner. We're striving to be the church that God has intended us for, for us to be. And with your stewardship and your obedience, we know we can achieve that. Let us pray. Father God, for this day, we give you thanks, God. We give you praise. Lord, there's no one like you, God. We thank you for all the ways you move and show up big in our life, God. Now, please bless this offering. May it be used for kingdom building here at this sign as you see fit, God. Please bless the giver. Return to them a good measure, pressed down and running over, God. We love you. We magnify. We glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There are a few ways you can offer your tithes and your offerings and your gifts through our website, www.turner-ame.org, through Cash App, dollar sign Turner AME, through Givelify by searching the church's name, or through our website, through uh, dropping it in the U.S. Postal Service to the church at 7201 16th Place, Hyattsville, Maryland. Thank you, Turner, for your stewardship. You can see the options on your screen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for your stewardship. Thank you. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Sister Vermeer, we are lifting your son in prayer. We know that God is a restorer and that God is a healer. My brothers and sisters, um, uh, especially those who are of this community of faith uh, at Turner, uh, please know that we will be reaching out to each and every one of you in the near future for us to plan a virtual memorial of remembering Mother Horton, uh, who transitioned uh, several days ago. I want everyone to know that we are working uh, to do and to plan something that we can do virtually uh, for she was the mother of us all and helped and sold into so many lives. And so we ask that you will continue to keep that family in prayer. Um, amen. God is a restorer. I want you to believe that. I want you to walk in it. I want you to talk in it. I want you to confess it. God is a restorer. 
God is a restorer. I pray that the God of restoration, the God of power, the God of abundance, the God of strength, the God of love, the God of peace, the God of joy, El Shaddai, I pray he will wrap you in the cradle of his love. I pray that his strength will envelop you. I pray that God will bless you suddenly. I pray God will blow your mind. I pray God will open up doors that you least expected. I pray ah, that the God of peace will transform us, mold us, and shape us in the vessel, in the man, the woman, the boy, the girl, that God is desiring for such a time as this. But this is the season of restoration. And Lord, whatever it is that you're doing in this season, don't do it without us. May he bless you, may he keep you, may his countenance shine upon you today and in the days to come. Come on, let's sing, amen.